Thank you so much for joining me. This is Anna with Craft Me a Card, and I am happily crafting for the crafter, and that is you. Don't forget to stay till the end. I have a lot of oopsies today for some reason. <laughs> okay, in the previous weeks, we have seen the effect of oxide inks on photo glossy paper, which was mind blowing. So, we did the smushing technique, which is what you're seeing right now. We also tried the dripping effect. We tried inking the paper and then embossing it. And then last week we saw embossing it first, then inking. So this week I decided to try stamping and painting with oxide inks on photo glossy paper. And I'm gonna start with this glove that I had sitting around in my trash bin. And I was like, huh, that is plastic and uh, it'll take ink well. It's non-porous, so I'm gonna try with this. So I just went ahead and I tried it for some little fun. <laughs> so I just went ahead and I sprayed a little bit of Festive Berries Distress Oxide Spray on my work surface and I picked it up with my crumpled up glove here. And first I was going for something like a rose, <laughs> you know, how it has different round petals on it. And I tried it and I played with it and yeah, it gave some effect, but it was too, um, too abstract for what I was looking for. Then I decided to incorporate a different color, a little lighter color. And I'm just showing you guys this just for your mind to think of possibilities of things that you can do with this technique, which is, you know, the oxide inks on photo glossy paper. There are many things you could do. You could ink up different kinds of materials and bring it on to your photo paper. So anyways, these are the two pieces that I ended up with, but that gave me an idea of something that I wanted to play with. And that is what if we do something like confetti-ish, right? Incorporating different colors. And that's exactly what I did. So I got different colors. I smushed them onto my work surface, added a little bit of water to lighten them up a bit, grabbed my crumpled up glove and just spotted everywhere on the piece of photo glossy paper. I used mm, sponge sugar, some <laughs> squeeze the lemonade, <laughs> broken china, picked raspberry, and last but not least, shaded lilac. Wiped the paper down and look at oh how pretty, how shiny and beautiful it is. So first what came to mind was an egg, like die cut an egg out of this paper. I thought that that would be lots of fun, but I want to leave that for Easter. So instead I went a different route. I pieced together this gorgeous little cute little girl here with glasses and I have a friend that was going through some hard times so I thought you know what this would be a perfect card for her just to wish you know her well. Let me show you quickly how I put her together. I know some of you like to see this process. So with three different colors of markers, these are Copic markers, they don't have to be Copic of course. I just went ahead and I drew some lines on her on her hair just just the same direction as it seems to be going. <laughs> inked up the edges of her face using a little sponge and some tea dye distress ink. Added some cute little pink cheeks with some sponge sugar and using a little brush just dipping it in the pad and then just scribbling on her little cheeks. Added some little foam squares on her bow just to add two layers. Added some glue for some security and just added two layers of it, two different colors. Added the body using some, again, some liquid glue. Flipped her over, added some glue where her hands are gonna be going. These things are so tiny that really you don't need much glue for this. Then I went ahead and I added some white over her eyes. Then I'm going to place the black part of the eye right in those spaces. Added her hair by adding some glue first. And here is her wig <laughs> then using some multimedia glue i went ahead and i added these little star antennas that she comes with they're just so cute and she also has little star earrings i thought these were just so adorable and such a cute little touch you can hardly see them <laughs> i think they're very cute attached her little bows using some liquid glue then again, since these little pieces were so tiny, these are her legs, okay? Get this, these are her legs. I added the glue through the back of her body. And then I also added her little tiny little sneakers. They're so cute. <laughs> Decided to embellish her bows using some little gem, tiny, whiny little flowers. And voila, here she is, a super cute. <laughs> I decided to cut out with my Cricut 
the number 100 and the percent sign. I inked up the edges of this number and uh, just to give it a finishing touch. And this girl dice it comes with her holding a balloon, but this is not a birthday card. So I decided instead to create this cute little adorable bouquet. I created it using some of the dies that I already had and just added little gems with some jewel glue right in the middle of these little tiny flowers and then some nouveau drops in the centers of the tiny yellow flowers. So cute! I cut down my stamped photo paper. I decided to add some lace in my favorite color <laughs> to add just a different look, embellish the card, add a different texture to it and a different layer. To hold it down in the front of the card, I added some multimedia glue, and in the back, I used my heat tool with some silicone. I added some double sided sponge adhesive just because she will be mailed, so this way she'll pop up once she is out of the envelope. Yes, and I decided to add some silicone to the back of these also because she's going to be placed on top of the lace. Yoohoo! Glued the little bouquet onto her hand, and then adding some foam adhesive, I popped up the number 100 and the percent sign. I decided to use a T ruler just to help me align this 100 and make sure that it was nice and straight. Added liquid multimedia glue because remember, this is photo paper. And added this piece onto my card base, which I had covered with some mint colored cardstock. Same one I used on the little girl and the 100%. Here she is all nice and finished. I really hope she is loved as much as I loved her. I think she came out super cute, super adorable. All right, let's continue. Well, I wanted to try stamping with an actual stamp and I found this rain stamp that I thought um, was what I needed, what I wanted. I want some rain since it's shiny paper and water tends to reflect light. <laughs> I figured that this would be the perfect one to use. After stamping it, I wiped it down just to make sure that I didn't have any of that oxide residue on there. And that was it for my background. Rain comes with an umbrella, or I should say an umbrella comes with rain. <laughs> so I went ahead and I actually drew it and cut it manually because I don't have a die that's an umbrella. I couldn't believe it. So needless to say, I ordered myself one. <laughs> so once I had my umbrella drawn out, I carefully went in with my scissors and I cut it out. I wanted the umbrella to have different sections, so I wanted a frame for it. And for this next part, you want to make sure that you have a crafter's knife that has a very sharp edge. So I went ahead and I changed the blade on my X-Acto knife, on my uh, crafter's knife, to make sure that I get a nice clean cut for this next step that I'm going to be making. So I cut two bases and I drew little lines as for the frame. That's going to be the frame on my umbrella. This is where you need a really sharp blade. My idea behind this is for each of these sections to be colored in a different color. So I like the idea of taking advantage that glossy paper is shiny. You have an umbrella that is uh, shiny like plastic. To help me out with the sections, I went ahead and I traced where each section starts and ends so that I can color it in. Time to color it in now, taking some worn lipstick. I start off with this first color and just by grabbing a paintbrush, a small paintbrush, adding the ink to my work surface, adding a little bit of water, mixing it, and then I go ahead and I apply it to the first section of where it's going to be peeking through on the umbrella's frame. For my orange, some spice marmalade. Squeeze lemonade for my yellow. And last but not least, cracked pistachio for my green. So it looks like this, but when we put the frame on it, you can't tell when one starts and one ends. See how fun the piece ended up with? I don't know how that orange got so many colors in there, but that's pretty cool. Grabbing a black alcohol marker, in this case it was Copic, I went ahead and I colored umbrella's frame black. And I also colored the handle of the umbrella using some leftover glossy paper. Once again, using the crafter's knife, I go ahead and I cut it out carefully. Now for my main image, I'm going to use this cute little sad faced <laughs> stamped girl. And I'm going to use some watercolor paper using some VersaFine black ink. And I read carefully and it says that it's perfect for using watercolors to color. 
I stamped my little girl three times because I knew I was going to be experimenting with colors. So I'm glad I did so because after I messed up two of my little girls, <laughs> the third one was one I was content with. I chose to use some Arteza watercolor markers that I bought a while back and I've never used them. I can't believe it. And they're very awesome. I like the watercolor effect that it was giving and that is exactly what I was looking for. Since it's raining, I wanted this little girl to have that watercolor look. And these uh, water-based markers from Arteza helped me achieve that. And just by getting some color off of a block, I went ahead and added water and applied it onto my little girl. Trying to soak the image well in water and then applying the color, this helps me achieve this. I went ahead and I die cut her out. I also die cut some clouds in different sizes and I decided to apply some ink onto them. By adding some stormy sky onto my work surface, some water, I go ahead and I dip these into the ink. And I like the effect it gives. It actually looks like a rainy cloud. <laughs> I pick out the background color out of the Samantha Rose die cuts with a view paper pack and I thought that this pink went perfectly with the color of dress of my little girl. So I cut this piece to the size of my card. This is going to be my card base and then I cut the stamped rain piece a little bit smaller than my base. I print it on my computer wishing you brighter days. I cut it out. And since the sentiment had black and so did the umbrella, I decided to cut an additional piece for my card front. And this is just something to give it a little black frame around, very thin, just to balance the card out. From this same black piece, I'm going to cut out some corners, also looking for that balance in that black. And I felt my little girl was floating, so I decided to ground her <laughs> by adding some ink at the bottom where she's standing. And I just, I loved how this part came out. I added three different colors here to achieve like a puddle look, but I just love how it came out. It really did look like a puddle. Um, so this was quite fun in, in trying out and experimenting with it. So I felt that I could stick these layers on now, one on top of the other. First, I add the stamped layer onto my pink cardstock and then adhere these two onto my black card base. And then kind of map out where the clouds are going to go. Use some multimedia adhesive and stick these clouds on and then bring on the umbrella. First I start with the handle because I know that I want the top of the umbrella to be raised up. So first I stick the handle using some multimedia glue because again this is photo paper. Then I bring in my little girl and I stick her on to three other layers of the same um, figure, her figure. And this is just to have her raised up a bit. And then I go ahead and I add the umbrella, the top of the umbrella, on some foam adhesive. I make sure to go around the edges of the sentiment with a black marker just to avoid having those white edges. Add some foam adhesive to pop it up a little bit. Add some liquid glue to it, multimedia, and add it to the bottom of the card. And since I already had the corners cut out, I thought it would be fun to include the center pieces of the corners with this same glossy paper, with the same kind of look. So I took a little bit of ink, added some water, and then dipped a scrap piece of this photo paper in this ink. And uh, I decided to cut it out and add it to the center of these corners. I added some foam adhesive to these corners and added them to the card. One, two, three, four. So after seeing these little negative pieces from these corners, they reminded me of raindrops. So I said, why not? So I went ahead and cut a couple more of these pieces and I took the inside, the negative piece of the die and I placed it in different spots in the card. I placed them putting some nouveau drops because a nouveau drop dries dimensional. So I thought it would be fun to have these little raindrops raised up just a tad off of the card. Zooming in and a little bit for you to see better. You can see the little drop, the nouveau drop there. And then I just grab some tweezers because these raindrops are so tiny. And I just place it on top, not pressing hard, and just let them dry. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. 
<laughs> that was fun. I had never played with the effects on this, <laughs> so that was fun. Alrighty, so there you have her. Loved how this card came out. It was just fun trying to create um, the feeling of sadness, but yet hope, <laughs> if you will. All right, let's continue. Using the oxide inks as paints inspired me to create this card, which is like a stained glass. Um, that's how I, I felt it was. So I just cut three different layers of this black cardstock to give the frame thickness. Die cut that same die on photo glossy paper glued the frame on it, smushed a little bit of ink on my work surface, die cut a second piece of this on photo paper, took the little pieces out of the die because they kind of like stay on the photo paper but they come out really easy, and I stained them. Sometimes I did the smushing technique and others I went ahead with a brush, and sometimes I just went directly in with the ink pad. So whatever works best, experiment, experiment. <laughs> Then to add the piece to the card base, I just added some multimedia glue and then I stuck in the piece and with my little pokey tool, I went around and I made sure that all the edges were nicely tucked in under the frame. I die cut the word friend in two colors, placed one on top of the other. Again, I printed out I am psyched to be your, cut it out and just popped it up on some foam adhesive. I finished embellishing it with some tube confetti, and here you have it. And here they are all together. Do you have a favorite? Let me know down in the comments. I hope you get inspired. I hope you create and be happy. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the notification bell. Give me a like, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. You little piece of foam. Ow, 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 ow. Dummy, dummy. Come out, come out wherever you are. Come out. Uh, missing the tip. There it is. Don't cut me, don't cut me. Ah, it's a crime scene.